Okay, so for those of you who are watching on live, we have had to redo our podcast episode six on decking, and that's because it didn't record right the first time. Yeah. Then one of us got COVID-19. Yes. And then one of us <laughs> drove across the country from California to Virginia. Not the same one that got COVID-19. No, it yeah. was very confusing. Yes, it's very <laughs> confusing. And then when we got back in the office, we realized we went to actually post the podcast and realized that the recording was messed up. And so we're not happy about that. Yeah. But we moved on and unfortunately we can't remember what our introduction was for Dex. It was the one with the, with the bear the, or the, uh, the yeah, the bear the or mountain lion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do I need to pull that up for you again? No, I have it. You have it? Okay. I was just making sure that it was going to play out loud. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get ready to record Homegirls Episode 6 again. Uh, and let's go ahead and start with the intro video. Yes, let's do it. It is another day of wildlife making news in Boulder, and this time we're talking about a mountain lion. Melissa Garcia is there in Boulder, where a mountain lion has made himself at home somewhere. Hi, Melissa. Hi there. Yes, he certainly has underneath a deck in between a couple homes. Boulder Police is here on scene, and actually just now we saw another ranger, which you can see back there, show up with a cage. So it's unclear exactly what's going to be happening. Here's the two homes where the mountain lion is hiding underneath the back deck. Now let's take a look at the video. Colorado Parks and Wildlife officers, as we mentioned, just arrived on scene initially about 20 minutes ago. Here is a picture of the mountain lion that was taken by an animal control officer. We have also been confirmed with a city of Boulder Ranger that nearby Flatirons Elementary School is on lockout due to a bear in a tree. We showed you this video from Madeline Johnson taken earlier this week of the bears in the North Boulder neighborhood. This would be, from what we understand, a fifth lockout in three weeks. So this is definitely affecting this neighborhood here. Coming back out live, it's unclear what Colorado Parks and Wildlife is going to do here, but we're going to stay on scene and keep you updated with the latest. Sending it back to you. Okay, so I just want to point out that that is not P22. Yeah, sadly, no. <laughs> I wish it was P22. It would have been such a great coincidence if it was. I know. So if you recall, P22 was back in crawl spaces. He was sleeping under someone's crawl space, and he's a mountain lion from California. This mountain lion is from Colorado. He doesn't have a name, tragically. Yeah. But um, I also want to point out, if you listen very carefully in that story, there happens to be a bear and a tree at the same time. So it's that just, is like, crazy. <laughs> I know. It's just like pure chaos. There, we got cats sleeping under the decks. We got bears and trees. It is never a boring day in Colorado. Yeah, no, they, they got a lot going on. I know. Speaking of a lot going on, before we get started, I want to point out that we are recording this in the middle of another flood in Houston. Yep, not surprised. Not surprised. You guys shouldn't be surprised. I feel like this is a never-ending theme on our show that we're constantly dealing with high water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I also want to point out this is actually a reshoot of this episode. We had the episode ready to go for you, but on a re-listen, it it did not record properly. Yeah, unfortunately, one of the mics crapped out on us. And yeah. We didn't notice till it was too late unbelievably tragic. Yeah. So I apologize for the late posting of this, but this is officially Homegirls episode six on Dex. Yes. yes. So uh, let's get started with, hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Aces. And we're the Homegirls. Today we're talking about Dex and decking. The deck is seemingly such a simple subject matter. We all know what decks are. Or do we? <laughs> Did you know, Easy, if there's a difference between a porch, a deck, a veranda, a balcony, and a front porch? No, that is a lot of different things. <laughs> I said porch. I messed it up. A difference between a patio, a deck, a veranda, a balcony, and a front porch. I did not know. You still didn't know, though. No, I still did not know. <laughs> you would have been fun to be like, oh, well, patio, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's so many different types of decking, two of which you're actually going to be talking about. Yes. Yeah. But first, let's get ha all hands on deck. And chat about the history. Yeah, I Let's did that. Do it. I went there. <laughs> Good one. <though. laughs> so this is really interesting, and I knew this, but I also kind of didn't never thought of it this way. But prior to the 1950s and 1960s, 
Americans were not really using their backyards for leisure. The front yard of your house was used to impress people who were coming up to the house, but your backyard was used more kind of just to sustain the household. It's where they grew vegetables, kept cows, chickens, goats. Uh, before cars, it's where you stabled your horses and had your like horse and buggy thing. Uh, also, it's where your outhouse would have been and your water cistern. And this is well into the 50s and 60s. I mean, people were wow. still keeping livestock in their backyard into the 50s and 60s, especially during the Depression. That's kind of crazy that they were really like using, like they didn't use their backyards to hang out. No, they were working. <laughs> I know, they were using it to like live in their house. That's crazy. Um, so basically technology progressed, right? We got fridges, we got indoor bathrooms, running water became much more common, even in rural areas of the United States. And suddenly um, all the stuff that was in the backyard of an American household moved into the house. So your backyard was empty. Wow. Yeah, you didn't need chickens anymore because you could get eggs. You didn't need cows anymore because you had a milkman, right? Yeah. Um, and you didn't need your outhouse or your water cistern. All of that moved into the house. So then you have this empty backyard and it's like, what am I supposed to do with this space? So you enter the baby boom and the idea that to be American, you need to spend more money, right? Yeah, it's capitalism. Yep. <laughs> uh, and that's when the idea of decorating your backyard and keeping up with the Joneses came into play. But the humble beginnings of the deck stretch far beyond the baby boom. No one actually knows who invented the deck. No one does. There's nobody who takes credit, no one civilization that has like the first ever deck. deck. However, However, they, they did, did find evidence, evidence of decks in ancient, ancient Israel. Israel. That's wow. I know. I know. <laughs> and the, the idea, idea was the deck would have been um, either leading out of a door from the house on a second floor or even the roof, which in this case, we'd probably call it a rooftop patio. But it's being used for a variety of things. If you were wealthy, it was used as leisure to catch wind because you had no AC, right? Yeah. Um, if you were, you know, more of a common person, you would have been using your deck space to cook and clean uh, and hang laundry and stuff like that. But we think of the modern deck now as really an extension of the patio and the porch. So you see these patios and porches throughout ancient history. Ancient Egyptians had um, large patios and porches where they could wave to people, you know. Yeah. Um, Romans had patios and porches. But let's jump back forward in time and um, we're going to talk about the porch as a part of American history. So I will say the deck does have a little bit of ancient history, but really where it comes into play is the story of the United States. Yeah. The modern deck is an extension of a patio on a porch, as I said. Porches are very important. Porches are always on the front part of a house. And in um, colonial times, and also antebellum, antebellum, antebellum period, which means before the Civil War, Okay. Yeah. Uh, they served as social gathering places. You would sleep in them in the summer if you had a veranda. The larger your porch, the larger your house. So that means you were wealthier and more prestigious. The early American porch was an extension of the living space. Remember, the backyard is being used for utilitarian purposes. So having these um, one or two level porches on the front of the house, uh, this is where you were gathering, not the back deck. Okay. You had a front porch instead of a back deck. Yeah. Um, and this is also where you get the idea of um, the uh, big house, you know, in the kind of the antebellum period, um, you have this big mansion, this big plantation home, yeah. and it would typically have a very prominent front porch here. Yeah, for sure. I know exactly what you mean, yeah. Yeah. We're real fancy with it. Real fancy. And this is used as you're pulling up to the house, so guests are like, wow, they really yeah. need to know. Uh, but also use an extension of the living space. As I mentioned, a lot of times your bedrooms would open up directly onto the porch. That would allow for air conditioning. And as I mentioned, people also slept on their porch when it got too hot in the South. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah, so the porch is really a status symbol. But again, that's because the backyard was being used for everything else. Yeah. All those, everything, well, we don't have basements in Texas, but if we had basements, everything you threw in, throw in your basement, you throw in your backyard. Yeah. Right? Um, but, Obviously, that time times change. <laughs> yeah. The times are changing. Yep, yep. So as um, we get into the fifties and sixties, and even in, even in uh, rural America, those things that were 
you know, happening in the backyard are moving into the house, you start to see this switch from let's have a party on our front porch to let's move the party out back because you have this big empty area. Yeah, I mean that that's understandable. You got more space. Yeah. You got more room to make privacy. Look good. Yeah, privacy. Nobody's gonna be looking at you on your front porch. Yeah, if you don't want, if you want to have a party and you don't want to have to invite the neighbors, if you have that party on your front porch, everyone's gonna show up. Yeah, everybody's gonna be like, "Can I join?" Exactly. <laughs> They'd be coming over with their potato salad. Yeah, and <laughs> all that other stuff. But when you move it to the backyard, you have this, you know, idea of privacy. Yeah. In the fifties and sixties, you're seeing this in Hollywood. So like that golden age, 40s, fifties, and sixties, golden age of Hollywood. You have people rich and famous people on their pool decks in their backyards throwing parties yeah but common people didn't have that it's when uh we get to the 80s now remember in the pool uh episode we talked about how pools became more prevalent in the 80s because people had more money to spend yeah the sure. same thing happens with the deck in the 80s it's the deck blows up it's this idea again of keeping up with the joneses having this whole like we live in America, so we can have nicer things. Yeah. The communists don't have decks, so we have decks. <laughs> yeah. The communists don't have pools, so we have pools. That kind of idea. So instead of having your giant front porch, now houses are built being built with the giant back deck and you know pool deck yeah. area. Well, wow. right. they really went all out in the '80s with their backyards. I know <laughs> they did. They put pools. They put decks. <laughs> And again, the deck becomes an extension of living space. So, but instead of being used as a bedroom, like the porch was being yeah. used, it's now being used as a living room. So the deck really becomes an extension, extension of your the living room, room in the 80s. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So the, the bigger, bigger the deck, deck the, the more money, money you have, have obviously. Um, so also in the 80s, you get more synthetic wood and vinyl decking material. So then the middle class can start building decks. Okay. And you know what happens when you let the middle class do things. They're going to, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. And they're going to do it. So they're going to go so hard that they're going to ruin it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This exactly. Is, that's essentially what happened. Um, and again, it's the same thing. Like I mentioned with the pool, pools become cheaper, decks become cheaper. Um, the rise of the deck mirrors the rise of the pool and then it started as a status symbol and eventually became a token of middle class achievement basically what happened. It's not very glamorous there. Yeah, no. Oh wait, it just told you to leave the meeting. Can you go back to Zoom? Oh, yeah, you have to leave that up. You can't, oh, I yeah, don't touch it. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah, we can also delete that part. Yeah, we'll <laughs> Um. So today's decks, decks are really still seen as a status symbol today. The fancier the deck, the fancier you be. It mostly has to do today with like how expensive you're willing to build, like what decking you're using. Yeah. Um, and, but most everyone, even townhouses and like apartments, cheap apartments have decks or patios now. So yeah, for sure. it really just depends on how big the deck is and how fancy the wood is. Um, it doesn't hold quite the glamour and mystique as it did in the 1960s. Yeah, so. now it's just, it's just a deck. It's just <laughs> a deck. My parents had a deck, we never used it. Sad. <laughs> And honestly, my mom in her new house, she has a deck and they just built an extension of their home onto the deck. They oh, the deck. oh, that's smart though. That's kind of yeah. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that's the deck. And I feel like it's a little anticlimactic. A little bit. I mean, it's a deck. It's <laughs> a deck. <laughs> what do you want? I know the challenge of this podcast is like, how do you make decks exciting? We're really limited on SpongeBob memes. Yeah, no and decking. We don't got any SpongeBob memes for this. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So on that note, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna be talking about two different types of decking. We're gonna be talking about composite decking and wood decking. So I'm gonna start with composite decking. So composite decking typically consists consists of some type of plastic material such as, and here we go with the pronunciations. <laughs> I think it's polyethylene. Let me see. This one? Polyethylene. Oh, okay. Polyethylene yeah. <laughs> and or uh, polyvinyl chloride and wood particles. The plastic may be from recycled products like milk jugs and soda bottles, or it may be made of virgin plastic. Boards might be hollow or solid 
and hollow boards are cheaper than solid boards and don't tend to expand and contract as often as solid boards do. However, when they do shift, they tend to do so in only one area. Additionally, hollow boards are not as sturdy and can hold water internally, which in turn can lead to warping and decom decomposition. Sorry. Wait, what? <laughs> Additionally, hollow boards are not as sturdy as uh, the other ones, like the plastic kind. And they hold water inside of them because oh, they're I hollow. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. So they hold water. water. They're literally yeah. hollow boards. They're you literally know? hollow boards. Okay. So they hold water inside of them, and this can lead to like warping and decomposition. And then while solid boards, obviously, they're not hollow. They're they go all the way through. They're solid. <laughs> they're solid. <laughs> <laughs> they expand and, expand and contract more than hollow boards, but they are stronger and they tend to look more like real wood than like hollow composites. So there's two different kinds of composites. What do you know? <laughs> I would go with the, the solid. <laughs> That's what it's making me tell. Yeah, I mean like the hollow just, I feel like it would feel cheap when you walk on it too. Yeah, and if it's like gonna fill up with water and stuff, that just sounds like a disaster way to Do you have. want something that fills up with water when you live in Houston, Texas? No, <laughs> especially if you're in Houston, no. Yeah, <laughs> especially if you've been here in the last three days. I know, it's, exactly, exactly. That deck would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to maintenance and durability for composite decks, as we said, composite decks are made of durable, long-lasting materials, and they are stain resistant and will hold up well to harsh weather. I don't know how true that is, but <laughs> at least <laughs> for Houston. <laughs> as well as natural wear and tear for up to 50 years. Unlike a natural wood deck that can last 10 to 30 years, which is not as long, 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 long as a composite before, before needing repair, repair. composites won't, won't, sl won't splinter, rot, or become susceptible to insect damage. It's so yeah, damage. we're actually going to talk about composite decks again in my section. And um, I think when we discussed it, Prior, we decided that we'd rather have a composite deck. Yeah, I'm deck. pretty sure that's what we had discussed. Just because, like, in Houston. Yeah, at least in, in Houston, 50 years is a long time. Yeah. Okay. That's like life. <laughs> but obviously, like, because we're in Houston, it's so hot and humid, it probably really wouldn't last 50 years. Yeah. It'd probably be more like 20 or 30. Yeah. I think it honestly really depends on where you live in yeah. the US or wherever you live. Like, but also maybe don't live in Houston. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you want a deck, don't. <laughs> we love you, Houston. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> we're both of us are not even yeah. originally from Houston. We're not. I mean, we're talking trash. I know. I mean, Houston is nice. It's just like there's so much crazy weather here. No, not just weather, but like chemical explosions. Oh my god, yes. And I remember we had one literally yes. like five minutes away from here. It blew out people's windows. Yeah, I remember I like that day I drove by where that was. And I was like, what is happening? Didn't your roommate get woken like it broke yes, his bed? Yes, he said he was like asleep and then all of a sudden he felt his bed shaking. He was like, what is happening? <laughs> But not just that, like, so that was back in January when that... Yeah, that was before, before like, COVID. Yeah. So during COVID, a hand sanitizer factory blew up. Jesus and Christ! That, people. I know, and that was, um, like, more uptown, so a bunch of people I knew had to shelter in place oh, because of the poisonous fumes raining down. Jesus! And, like, this is not an unusual thing. Yeah, no, this, this happened. <laughs> yeah, and it's not just chemical factories and floods, but also, like, oil things whatever they're i don't know oil they blow up though all the time <laughs> like the natural gas is so yeah bad. yeah it's like really like and you know why it is we're so off topic i know I'm sorry. So sorry but you know what yeah. that is it's because we have no environmental regulation here that's true yeah, yeah that's we're like we're a business friendly put that in quotation marks city yeah. so there is no environmental regulation which is why you see, like on my street, like a tire factory, a car. Yeah, lot, this is true. A I've school. Seen it. There's a horse stable, and then there's my neighborhood. <laughs> that sounds like the craziest yeah. street. <laughs> there's a horse stable. There's a horse stable and a dam. That is wild. Yeah, I just don't like, understand. <laughs> we have no zoning, no environmental regulations. We just do whatever we want. So I'm for sure to sure we can find a sponge bonding for that. So. Anyway, I'm gonna get it back. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying we're, to we're make people right. understand why we're always like 
down on Houston. I know. I mean, I like Houston. It's a fun city. There's, there's a lot of good food. Yeah, there is a lot of good food, but the weather but is crazy. It is crazy. And like, honestly, if you have a low tolerance for nonsense, it's not going to be the place you want to live. So. Yeah. Okay. Back to composite deck. <laughs> Anyways, so. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Digression. Additionally, most composite decks. I feel like I said that so weird. Additionally, <laughs> most composite decks have built-in UV resistance, so they won't fade or lighten as much as natural wood would over time. Natural wood would over time. Natural wood would. <laughs> but if your composite deck does fade over time due to direct sunlight exposure, you can stain it, repaint it to make it look new again. So it's really easy, I guess, to, even if it starts to fade and stuff, you can make it look new. Which again makes it really good for Houston because we do have such intense summers. Yeah, and I'm sure it's a lot more complicated to do that for, for wood and a lot more expensive. Yeah. But yeah. Um, many people don't realize that staining or painting composite is possible, but it's doable and can enhance the beauty of your deck over time, keeping it looking like new. So that's a pro. That's a pro. So now we'll go on to wood decking. Now, wood decking is the original and oldest choice for decking materials. Decks have been using wood for their makeup since their existence, so we know it's a proven material that looks great on decks. Um, when it comes to wood, the biggest pros are that it's economical, long-lasting, and it comes in several, several different types of wood options, uh, like cheaper pressure-treated options or high-quality varieties as well. So I guess there's really a long range of Yeah, we're going to talk decks, about yeah. those in my section. Yeah. So let's move on to maintenance durability for wood. So while composite decking is made to look like natural wood, some people will prefer the authenticity of wood. You know, I mean, it's a money. It's it's uh, it's not a money thing. It's like a what would you say? Big stick energy. Big, big deck energy. <laughs> big deck energy. Big deck energy. <laughs> we didn't think of that last time. <laughs> That's <was> good. <laughs> Big deck energy. Uh, it's about um, showing off. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you have like the money for it, I'm sure like you're gonna prefer the actual wood. Yeah, you want that street cred of having a actual wood deck. Yeah, and you can brag about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would. Big deck, big deck energy. Yeah. yeah. So, so as durable as wood decking wood is, is, it's still it's far more, more susceptible to maintenance costs. costs. Right. It's, oh my God, I feel like <laughs> I'm like stumbling on my words. Okay, let me redo that. Sorry. <laughs> However, as durable as wood decking is, it's still far more susceptible to maintenance costs, time, and effort. Most decks require a full-on retreatment consisting of sanding, cleaning, staining, or painting, and sealing every two to five years. That's why you want to be a rich person because you can pay someone to do that. Yeah, and I that's, don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to do that either. Two to five years is not a long time. <laughs> there's a reason I don't have a jack on my house. I know, and like, there's like you got a budget for these things. Like yeah. if you do have these, like you got to keep in mind, I'm gonna have to be redoing stuff on this and paying money every two to three years and here's the thing like i got this stupid deck to relax and now i have to work on it like how annoying exactly yeah like it's supposed to be for leisure can i not okay. just sun myself <laughs> can i not i, not I know like I there's like, always there's something, something to stress about, about. Yeah. 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 There's, there's always, always something, something. All right, um, <laughs> and, and if you leave it untreated, the deck will fade and it will eventually rot. So if you don't, if you ignore it, it is gonna go, it's gonna burn down to the ground. Yeah, don't ignore your deck. Yeah, you can't wash your deck. Yeah, wash your deck. You hear your deck, like, you don't want no funky smelling deck, so What have we done? What have we done? Oh my God. But yeah, guys, so you, it's something you can't ignore because it'll it'll eventually just like blow up on you and it won't be worth it in the end. Yeah. So additionally, wood decks are known to splinter or warp due to the elements or normal wear and tear from use. This is especially noticeable in pressure treated wood. However, on average, a well cared for deck, or if you take care of it, if can last up to twenty years or more. Still not as long as composite, but it's a decent amount of time if if it's properly treated. Okay, there's always that if. Yeah. <laughs> so in the end, I think the argument of wood or composite really comes down to preference. And if you love the way wood looks and you can afford it, you got the time and money for it, then 
It's not a bad choice. It's not a bad choice. And you know what they say? It's not the size of your deck. It's how you use it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can go on forever. Oh, God. I could literally go that on That is forever. amazing. I know. That is a skill. <laughs> I know. I could go on forever with this. Uh, this is PG. This is PG. This yes. is PG. We're talking about decks. We're talking about decks and decking. Getting decked right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, guys. So yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say something else, but I won't. So in conclusion, if if you got the money for wood, go for wood. But if you wanna, if you want something that's low maintenance and that's gonna last twice as long as as wood, then composite might be the one for you. <laughs> it's it's personal choice. It's a personal choice. Yeah, it's personal choice. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. All right. Back over to me. Back over to you. <laughs> Back over to me. See if I can behave. And my can you check Facebook real quick and make sure it's still working? Yeah, we're still good. We're still good? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So decks. In my section, I mentioned that a deck is different from a porch, balcony, veranda, or a patio. Yes. I'm, let me preface. Now we're gonna talk about the deck in the modern home. Let's go. Some modern decks. Okay. Modern decks. Modern decks. A deck is something that uh, it's always going to be raised. It's always going to have an appearance of wood. It's always going to be attached to the back of the house, and it's going to have a perimeter railing on it. Anything that does not meet those criteria is not a deck. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. A porch is always going to be on the front of your house. That's what the difference between um, a porch and a deck. Because a porch can have railing, right? Yeah. And a porch can, can even be wooded, wooded it can be raised. raised. So technically, a porch needs all qualifications for a deck. It's just, just that the porch is always in the front of the house. That's the difference. Yeah. Porch, porch is in the front, deck is in the back. Party in the front, deck in the back. Yeah. Okay. Balcony has no support. So we might think of a balcony as a deck. But a balcony has no supports. A deck is always going to have supports. Yes, a balcony is just freestanding. Yes, yeah, it's, just, it's just kind of floating. A veranda can be confused as a porch and a deck, but usually verandas have roofs, whereas your porch and your deck might not have a roof. Yeah. Some porches have roofs. See, this is confusing. Um, but a veranda, the way you know it's a veranda, is it's always an extension of a living space. So it's either being screened in to use for sleeping or dining or, um, you know, chatting. <laughs> yeah. But a veranda, even if it's wrapped around a house, is the difference between a jack and a porch and a veranda is that the veranda has a roof and it's always used for living space. And you can see how you can have like variables that kind of mix in there. Yeah. It is a little confusing. Yeah, it can be. I mean, it's just like really they have like one difference or and most houses are not going to have a porch deck and veranda. Yeah, I feel like you'll always just have one. Well, you might have a porch maybe and a deck. Two. Yeah, maybe two. But, but you're not going to have a porch and a deck and a veranda. Yeah, I, that's just, I feel like that's impossible. <laughs> Tip, yeah, typically the veranda is wrapping around the entire yeah. house. So. Yeah. Uh, a patio is, the big difference between a patio is it's never raised. A patio is going to be on ground level. Yeah. And it's usually going to be masonry or concrete instead of wood. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about types of decking material. You started this conversation. Yes. I'm going to take it to the next step. All right. PG, though. Yes, PG. 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 Uh, pressure treated, uh, I almost said it. <laughs> pressure treated deck. I caught myself. That would have been a disaster. <laughs> um, now, what pressure treated means is fur, not apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur. I'm talking about like the fir tree. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, F I R. Okay. I think Christmas trees can be fir trees, aren't they? Like, I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Well, maybe. <laughs> uh, but it's fir, F I R. Okay, okay. Mixed not, with, not, yeah, not, not fir. Not she got the fir. Okay. okay. Uh, not, uh, so it's fir mixed with anti rot and insecticide. Prior to 2004, pressure treated decks, get this, they were made with arsenic. Excuse me? Yeah, <laughs> all the way up to 2004, you were like, like, this is a good idea. <laughs> that, and don't people like cook out on their decks? I know, right? So if your deck was on fire, 
what they found was um, a couple things. First, children are stupid and they would eat the deck pieces but, or like lick it because they're babies and babies are uh, just like yeah. dumb. They, they, they do that. Yeah. And just whatever. <laughs> um, and so obviously you don't want that because the deck's made with arsenic. But also in the house, if the house would light on fire and the deck would light on fire, you would be inhaling that arsenic. This is really, really dangerous. Yeah. So then they moved to copper. And unfortunately, like copper is still really toxic when you light it on fire. So don't burn down your pressure treated deck. Um, but if kids are eating deck or like animals or someone's chewing on the deck pieces, um, it's not going to hurt them. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Decks are, uh, pressure treated decks are usually tan or brown, but they can be stained to whatever color. So that's, that's nice. nice. They, they have, have a decades long lifespan, but they need to be refinished every other year. That's the only kind of caveat to that. Yeah. Then we have the cedar decking. This is the most common. If someone has a real wood deck, it's probably going to be a cedar deck. Uh, hardwood common is the most, is the best type of cedar, but you can also use sapwood or uh, other parts. And what hardwood common means is it's just the part that they take out of the tree to build the deck, which I think it's the middle part. Okay. Where a sapwood is like the more outside parts of the tree that can be used to build your deck as well, but it's not going to last as long or be as durable as the hardwood common. A cedar deck has a lifespan of 15 to 20 years, but it does need to be refinished every year. That's so much work. I know, I know. <laughs> then you have the redwood. Uh, we don't have redwood decks in Houston anymore. There might have been a time where we were using redwood decks, but that time has passed because we almost decked the redwood tree to death. Poor redwood trees. I know. So now you only can build redwood trees in on the Pacific Coast. So California, Oregon, and Washington are now the only states allowed to build redwood decks. That's good. Save the trees. Save the yes. trees. <laughs> Typical human nonsense. Yep. So yep. Um, you're not really going to see it in Houston. If you do, it would be on a house that's super duper old and it would be amazing that that yeah, even and still, yeah, yeah, that it was even still alive. Then we have vinyl. Vinyl is made of PVC, which is that same piping they put in your house. That's so weird. I know. <laughs> there is no wood at all in a vinyl deck. Okay. Yeah. It can be white, gray, brown, or tan. And it usually comes with a 25-year warranty, which you get from the manufacturer. Nice. Very, very low maintenance. And there's two types of vinyl decking. There's the hollow core where the center is hollow, kind of like what you put yeah, with yeah. composite decking. And there's also the solid core deck where it is a solid piece of plastic. Okay. Now these decks, they do have a wood look about them, but they definitely don't feel like real wood. Yeah, so I they feel like if you touched it or even looked at it up close, you would definitely be able to tell it's not wood. Yeah, you'd be like, this probably is not a real wood deck. Yeah. So. Then we have composite, woo! Yeah. Uh, it's actually, you, you mentioned this, it's a mix of wood fiber and recycled polyethylene. Okay. Yeah. It does look like real wood though, which is the bonus of composite compared to a vinyl deck, because even though composite has plastic mixed into it, because it has that wood fiber, it does give the appearance of a real wood and the feel of a real wood deck. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely go with that one. <laughs> I, yeah, I agree. For all the reasons that ECs mentioned, it usually comes uh, with a 25-year warranty, which is from the manufacturer. And as you said, low maintenance, very low maintenance. It does need a deck wash. I don't know if you mentioned this. It needs a deck wash every three to four years to prevent mold. Okay. Yeah. That's but true. that's easy. You just buy that at Home Depot, attach it to your hose, yeah. and just spray it out. Yeah, that's nothing, that's nothing intense. Like, you don't need to refinish you just, it. You, it'll take you like an hour to do that. Like. Yeah. So... Then we have, okay, so apparently I've been pronouncing this wrong. I've been calling it IPE, but it's not pronounced that way. Really? I think it's pronounced it. Or oh. it is it eat? I -E? It's pronounced, <laughs> it's not pronounced IPE. Yeah, like it's I mean, not a... It's not an abbreviation. Yeah. And I thought it was, but I don't know how to pronounce it. So if you know how to pronounce it, let us know. Please help. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what it is is South American hardwood. And this is, if you got the money, this is your deck. Oh, this expensive. Yeah. This okay. is the most expensive type of decking on the current deck market. Wow. This is your big deck energy on fleet right now. Okay. 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 So this is the top dog right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, what 
uh, Megan the Stallion and uh, <laughs> Cardi B put in their houses after they did WAP. Oh, God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> this is serious. All right. Um, it's South American hardwood. It's naturally resistant to rot. It has 25-year lifespan. And here's the, the issues though. Okay. It is really heavy. It's super duper heavy and it's super difficult to install. It has to be resealed every year, which is what we expect with wood. But the biggest controversy with this type of decking material is that the suppliers, because it comes from South America, they're basically killing the rainforest to harvest it. Wow. So you have to make sure, I know, you have to make sure you get it from a supplier who's engaging in sustainable wood practices, which means they're making, they're getting it from their own barn instead of stealing it from Amazon. Yeah, that's important. I know. And again, it's like, why human being? Yeah. Like, we got to take care of this earth, man. We really like, get one earth. And even though they're now saying Venus might be livable, let's not kill the Earth we have. I don't. I don't want to move to Venus. I don't want to move to Venus. I don't. I, I don't either. I'm. I'm happy here. I'm very happy here. So, um, I, except I live in Houston, but it's better than Venus. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Houston is like climate change every day. We get like the full cycle. It's like you never know what to expect the next no. year. You really don't. The only thing we don't get is earthquakes. Yeah, which is, that's nice. Yeah. But we, we do get earthquakes. We do get seismic activity when a factory blows up, though. Yeah. That has happened. We get little baby yeah. shakes. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry we digressed again. I'm not sorry. So let's talk about some decking basics. The big thing you need to know is that you probably need a permit to build a deck at your house. That's understandable. Yeah, you can't just be building decks and taking names here. You usually need a permit to yeah. build a deck. Um, the, main the main part of decks, decks that we're going to talk about today are post, post and joist, the, the actual decking, decking which the difference between the words deck and decking is a deck refers to the entire structure, where a decking refers to the wood and how you attach the wood to the structure. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's cool. I will take, take decks for 500, Alex. <laughs> um, that's a Jeopardy joke in case anyone knows that. <laughs> uh, also, we're going to be talking about stairs, and we're going to talk about my favorite thing, electrical receptacles. Electrical receptacle. Electrical You just, it's just nice to say that right. word. Yeah. It blows. You still have not watched Milan Rouge, have you? No. <laughs> then I was going to say electrical receptacle. It's just like that song. Um, they sing in Milan Rouge. Oh, I think I remember you telling me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But you haven't seen it. So I'm not going to go with that joke because you won't appreciate it. I'm sorry. You I should hope, be sorry. I hope the audience. You should be really <laughs> embarrassed. I am embarrassed. Please, yeah, you, you can roast me, it's okay. Yeah, everyone should just, everyone should, everyone is ashamed of you. <laughs> and embar like the secondhand embarrassment is real. I know, whoever's <laughs> listening is just like cringing inside right now. <laughs> All right, post and joist. Deck posts are the supports that hold a deck in the ground. They vary depending on the size and the height of the deck. And they're usually anchored using a combination of concrete and gravel. They can also be anchored directly into an existing concrete slab. So sometimes you have a porch and then you build a deck over that porch. That's totally fine. You can build a deck into an existing concrete slab. Deck joists are the beams that provide the frame for the deck floor. So the posts are the supports and the joists are the frame. The deck will typically have a vertical beam that's directly connected to the post and then the joists are then horizontally attached to that beam. But that's not always the case. That's usually the case. That's not always the case. Oh, okay, okay. I feel like that was a really convoluted sentence. Okay, so it's usually the case, but not always. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But also, like, um, I want to say it again, again because I, I, feel, I just feel like it didn't make any sense. So the deck will have a vertical beam that's connected to the post, and then the joists are horizontally attached to that beam. That's okay. how you're building the frame of the deck. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And um, there's a really good series that... Lowe's put together. If you just Google like build a deck Lowe's, um, they have a really good video that shows you each of these like steps to build a deck. Ooh. So if what I'm saying to you makes absolutely no sense and you're interested in what I'm talking about, definitely check. Yeah, out. if you want like a visual of it. Decking. So remember decking is the material that makes up a deck. So it's what we just talked about, composite, redwood, cedar, 
IP or IPE or however yeah. you say it. Yeah. Fancy wood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it might be it. I don't know. Yeah. We'll look it up. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll have to look it up. We would play the sound, but when we turn the sound on, it's giving us feedback. Oh yeah. 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 So yeah. I'm not gonna risk that. Yeah. Um Decking should not be laid too tight. This is important. There should be an eighth inch gap between boards to prevent water from puddling. And the gap should never be more than eight inch. What? One eighth of an inch. So there should be one, I can't say that, one eighth of an inch gaps between the boards. But they shouldn't be bigger than eighth, one eighth of an inch. Gosh, why is that so hard <laughs> to say? Anything that's bigger than an one eighth of an inch could be a safety hazard. Okay. Each segment of decking should be uniform across the joist, and um, each segment of decking should also sit on a minimum of four joist. All nails should be secure in the decking. You don't want any nails sticking out when you're walking on your deck. That would be horrible. I know. <laughs> that, oh, that's how people end up with lockjaw. Like, oh, God. Like technic shock meeting disaster. Anyway, yeah, I know. <laughs> in high wind areas, which we have some of those in Houston, um, there might be additional requirements for securing decking. So if you have a beach house and you have a deck on that beach house, there's probably going to be additional requirements to secure the deck in case of a windstorm. Yeah. Now the big thing to know about the stairs is they need to have equal rise and run. And I'm going to tell you a story. I, if you saw the recording last time, you know the story, but I want to share it again. I feel like it's important. Yes. So my, the setup is a little confusing. My brother's first house is, Sister-in-law's fiance built their deck. Okay. So it is his wife's sister's fiance built. Okay, okay. 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 And he built the whole deck and then he was like, I'll finish the stairs later. But before he could get to finishing the stairs, they broke up. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so he had put in little tiny dinky stepping stool stairs on, on this deck. deck. I mean, legit, like, like it was only, it was the, only uh, maybe uh, a three, yeah, three, two, three foot deck, deck. so you didn't get the big stairs, stairs like yeah. a long stairs. stairs. But, but these stairs, stairs were so small, it was like a stepping stool. Like oh, they God. were just temporary stairs so people could get on and off the deck. And he was supposed to come back and fix them, and then they broke up. That's tragic. I know. <laughs> so my sister-in-law was having a heart attack because they were going to host my high school graduation party, which I'm not going to give you the date because then you'll figure out how old I am. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep that secret. We'll keep that to ourselves. <laughs> Um, she's having a heart attack because they were going to host my graduation party and they had these dinky little stairs and like the deck was a big part of that because you have your parties on the deck. Yeah. Yeah. So they hosted the party. I have like 70 people in my family. It's a huge family. All 70 people converge on my brother's house with the two small deck stairs and everyone's falling off the deck essentially. <laughs> That's what happened. So my cousin Brian loads his plate full of food goes to walk down the stairs and just flies off the deck. Oh my God. Yeah. He <laughs> fall, like literally lost his footing completely. Cause these, I, I wish I had a picture of how small these stupid deck I stairs. I wish I could have seen what this looks like. <laughs> yes. He landed face first in the grass, but he managed to keep his plate of food. Okay. I was about, I was about yeah. to say. He did not lose any item off his plate. As long as the food's okay. The food made it. Isn't that not crazy? <laughs> it's crazy. He really, he must have some interesting balance. He must have been a waiter or something. I know. <laughs> but he managed to keep his food completely safe. So this is what happens, people, if you don't have proper deck stairs. You will you, you will lose your home. hamburger. Yeah, you might lose a hamburger. Yeah. So <laughs> um, the rise of the run is very important also for safety reasons. Um, you also want to have the space between the stairs closed, so you don't want to have open spaces too much of an open space because people could fall and slip. Yeah, and stuff like that. Sure, yeah. Um, so again, you need to have eighth inch of a gap between the boards um, on the stair steps themselves. Okay. Now we move to electrical receptacles. Electrical receptacles. So sexy. I know. Um, <laughs> Deck should have one or two available electrical receptacles if they're over a certain size. So if the deck is less than 20 square feet, you actually don't need any electrical receptacles. Oh, okay. okay. But if it's over 20 square feet, you need um, at least one, preferably two. Okay, that's understandable. Yes. And the purpose of this is they don't want people running extension cords out of their house or up the deck stairs. Yeah, that is just... It's the safety. Yeah, it's the safety. Fire safety, trip hazards, all that other type stuff. 
So electrical receptacles can either be installed in the wall, like the exterior wall of the home, or they can actually be installed in the deck themselves. Some people kind of like this flat, you know. Yeah, you know, like that's actually drum. like very convenient. It yeah. is, it's super duper convenient. So um, electrical receptacles um, on the deck must meet the same requirements as any other outdoor electrical receptacle. And nice. I think that's obvious. But yeah, yeah. I wanted to say that just so there was no confusion there. The other big thing I want to tell you people, don't put your deck over a septic system or a fire pit. If you listened to the septic system <laughs> podcast, you would know nothing should be over your septic system. It will be a very bad day when your septic system backs up and your deck is over your septic system. Especially a whole deck. Like, you don't want that over your septic system. Imagine if it was a low deck over a septic system. You got, like, the poop water is going to bubble up. It would be just... It would, it, yeah, it, it would gets be so over so fast. <laughs> and here's the thing. If you put a deck over a septic system and that septic system does go haywire, they like, have to rip your deck out. I'm like, sorry. You're going to have a poopy deck. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants a poopy deck. <laughs> oh, we need to stop. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> this episode is rated PG. I've said that. I want to remind you. Anyway. It's just about, like, imagine how expensive that is. Yeah. You rip off your deck, you got to dredge your front yards and fit your septic system, put your septic system back together, and then rebuild your deck. Yeah, if you if you mess up both of those things, oh my god, you would be drowning in debt. <laughs> and poop. Yes. Fire pits. ECs, why don't we put our decks over fire pits? I don't think anybody wants to set it on fire. <laughs> I want to know who the person is that forced us to tell you this. I know, like, who was the guy that actually tried this? Clearly there was a precedence that was set that now we have to say in all disclaimers, don't build your deck like, over a fire pit. They wouldn't say that for no reason. Like, it must have happened it to happened. somebody. Like, it, it must have. have. There is somebody, there, there is, is that, that guy, guy, probably a Florida man. <laughs> probably a Florida man, yes. That built their deck over a fire pit or installed a fire pit underneath their deck. But also, the, your deck's getting it smoky. I know. I'm really like, what was the thought process behind this? <laughs> All right, people. <laughs> Let's talk about problems. Problems with decks and decking. Wood decay, termites, fading colors, water damage, board gaps, and structural weakness. Wood decay is a big one. Um, that's, gonna, that's how your leg is going to go through your deck. If you have wood decay, it will just yeah. through. Yeah. Uh, it's going to look, um, basically your deck boards are going to look rotted. I really have no better explanation. Like, you know what Wendy Kay looks like. Yeah. It's going to look like the floor of like a haunted house or something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh my God. So termite damage is, looks, can be confused as wood decay. Uh, but the big difference between a termite damage on a deck and a dry rot, rot damage from wood decay is termite damage is going to look smooth. So the holes and the grooves that they make are going to look like something's made them. Yeah, and we'll put, we'll put a picture in the blog, but there is a very noticeable difference. Yeah. Like, I mean, I can see from a layman who's never seen it at all, they may be like, I can't tell. But the big thing, if get up and close, and if it looks like something's actually been tunneling on your deck, that's termite damage. Yeah. Fading colors is big, and EC's kind of mentioned this. When your colors fade, a lot of things can start to happen. And the reason the color is fading is because the stain is wearing off. Yeah. And when the stain and the finish of the deck wear off, it's going to be more susceptible to UV radiation, water damage. It's going to hold the water. And also the decks can even start to move and separate because they're just not as strong anymore. Yeah, they start to like warp and stuff. Yeah. So fading color is actually a really big issue with decks. If you see that start to happen, don't treat it lightly. It's time to refinish your deck. Yeah. Fix it before it's, it's too late. Exactly. exactly. Water damage is going to lead to wood rot. It's going to lead to color fading. Um, water damage is essentially, it's, it's going to look like your deck, part of your deck is darker than the other. Yeah, basically. yeah it's very noticeable. It's very like, noticeable. You might even get some mushy parts. Yeah, and we'll post pictures of all of it so you guys can get a good idea. Yes, yes. Board gaps is obvious. Remember I said there needs to be one eighth of an inch. Uh, when those gaps get larger, you're going to look at trip hazards, fall hazards, nails are going to be sticking out, 
all sorts of issues. Yeah, for sure tripping, like, you will trip. For you sure. will trip. You're going to drop your phone, your phone's your phone going to fall right. When you yeah, no, and then you got to go under there to get it. So. And then you got to go <laughs> dig through the fire pit or dig through the septic system <laughs> yeah. to get your phone. You don't want to do that. Structural weakness is obvious. If your neck has structural weakness, it's going to fall off your house. That is an intense photo. <laughs> I know. The photo is legit of a deck that's completely fallen off. It has completely collapsed. Yes. And it appears to have crushed their fire pit underneath. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that actually is, but it's something underneath this been yeah, just completely crushed. For sure. Structural weakness is bad. So if you ever get on a deck and it's wobbly, holy cow, get off that deck. Yeah, do not. Do not even walk on it, stand on it, touch it. <laughs> Every once in a while, we hear like at a college party where like a deck collapses. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, I don't know what this was, but I remember I had seen like a video of all these kids at a college party and like the floor came in or something. Like <laughs> that, that was an apartment. Yeah. I remember that. Do you remember that? Was that on Vine? I think it was. Like it was on Vine or something, but they were like, they were like just partying and like the floor just like completely caved in. And then <laughs> it might have been on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. May Vine rest in peace. I'm, I'm going to have to go searching for that. <laughs> but it happens on decks. There's been a couple of like instances where people have died at college parties because the decks have collapsed. Yeah. That's so, so like you do not put a hundred college kids on a deck. Any deck. I mean, any deck, if you have 100 people on it and it's not rated for 100 people, it's it's going to cause structural yeah, weakness. for sure. So when you dig, get your deck built, the person who builds the deck will tell you what the load is. Yeah. And that's often why you see, like, wicker furniture on decks, because it's lighter. Oh, weight. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So remember, I said my mom just added a room onto her deck? Yeah. So her deck was strong enough to support the weight of the room, but they had to be careful with what furniture they bought because of the weight. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so, understandable. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't even fall through with that. Interesting. Yeah. Deck inspection. So I say this every time. The inspection of a deck in your state might be different than the inspection of a deck in my state, which is Texas, if you hadn't guessed. Um, but basically, in Texas, Decks are found in section one of the Trek Inspection Report under porches, balconies, decks, and carports. The inspector is required to inspect all attached balconies and porches. They're required to inspect abutting porches, decks, balconies that are used for ingress and egress. That means exit and entrance to the home. An inspector should report as deficient grading around the deck, the space between balusters, which is the railings. You don't want people getting their heads or their bodies caught between the railings. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, greater than four inches. They also need to report as deficient any deficiencies, I said that twice, in accessible components. The inspector is not required to take measurements for all the components of the porch, balcony, or deck, nor are they required to look underneath the deck where the headroom is less than 18 inches or the access opening is less than 24 inches wide and 18 inches high. So, in case you were wondering. Yeah. Now, deck remediation. We're going to talk about this really quick. Yes. Deck remediation is typically done by a deck-specific contractor, although it could be done by a landscaping company. It just depends on what that landscaping company specializes in. The cost of deck remediation really depends on the labor, the deck material, and what the issue is. So if you have a real wood deck, it's going to be more expensive to fix the problems with your deck, basically. Okay. Um, a complete deck repair or reconstruction can cost thousands of dollars. But luckily, most deck remediation involves only correcting a few things, which is like the railings or nails, deck stairs, mold, rot, mildew, replacing deck boards, refinishing, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. For decks that need pest control, a termite company should actually be called out instead of a deck company. So if you actually have a pest issue with your deck, you're not going to call the deck company. Yeah. There's not really much they can do to help you. You're going to call a termite company or a pest control company, and they'll come out and treat the deck, then I actually would suggest calling out a deck company just to make sure that the structural integrity of the deck is good. Because you don't know how much those termites are. Yeah, use. they could have eaten through quite a bit of it, and you might have to like replace some, some wood on it or something. Yeah. So if your deck has termites, you call the termite company first, and then the deck company. Yeah, for sure. Because if you call the other one first, they're not going to be able to do anything at all. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. So that's my, that is my contribution to this discussion I, on that. I think even though, you know, it was kind of anticlimactic, I think it was very interesting. <laughs> I think it was. And, you know, even though there's no Spongebob memes, I, just, I still feel like we filled the gap. Yeah. Really well. Yeah, for sure.
with the big deck energy. Yeah, big deck energy, guys. Big deck energy. <laughs> is it time for credits? I think so. It's time for credits. Okay. okay. Music credit is Kevin McLeod of Incomp Tech. The source credit is the National Park Service. Nice. I know. Make sure to check us out on YouTube at A Action Home Inspection Group Houston, on Facebook, on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on TikTok at Houston Home Inspector, because TikTok's here to stay. Yeah, I was about to say, TikTok is here to stay. TikTok God ain't going there. nowhere. <laughs> I know, thank God. So make sure you look on, uh, look for those debt collapsing videos on TikTok. Yeah, definitely go check us out on TikTok, guys. We have a lot of nice and funny content on there. Wait a second, how many followers do you have on TikTok? Look at our profile. Let's check, let's check. And also, if you like horrible singing, check out our TikTok. Oh, we have some great songs on there that we have, like, original music. If you want some secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny, though. Oh, sorry. All right, I'll cut that out. Oh. How many ECs keeping us waiting here? I'm so sorry. 35,000. <gasps> oh my God. We have 35,000 followers on TikTok. That is mind boggling. <laughs> Are we TikTok famous? Honestly, a little bit. I would say so. I mean, 35,000 is a lot. <laughs> that I never in my life. I would have never thought that we had that many followers or would get to that many followers. I'm like emotional. It's really crazy. This is a huge it deal. is really crazy. First of all, I want to say it was Mary's idea. For That's right. Talk. Credit due or credit due. Chris is going to try to say he came up with the whole thing himself. It was, it was Mary. I remember. It was <laughs> Mary. <laughs> and who had to campaign for it and be like, we need to do this. We need to do this. It was Mary. She was the one like pushing us yes. to do it. And then he walked in and was like, we should do TikTok. I've been saying. Uh, <laughs> what did I say to you? Put a clap between each of those. I know. So, anyway. <laughs> Please check us out on TikTok. Make sure, make sure you check us out on TikTok at Houston Home Inspection. Um, our next episode's on Windows. Yes, that's going to be a very exciting episode. And I so wish we could have done Windows I know. during, during this storm, storm because, because there's, there's a section on Windstorm. Storm. Yeah. In the Windows yeah. section. Yeah. But instead, we'll have to wait till next time, which I think is next week. Is very soon. Yeah, so, so it's not that long. It's not that long. Yeah, it's not not as big of a gap um, because the microphone's actually going to work. This time. Yeah, yeah. On that note, I'm Mary, and I'm Easy, and we're the Home Girls. And thanks for listening. We'll be back to chat next time about Windows. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah.